Hi there, Mike Chan here with Lumiere Skin and Spa. Welcome to 360 Anti-Aging TV. Today we're going to be talking about the most widely performed aesthetic procedure in the world today, and that is Botox. Is it for you? Now, in some parts of the world, Botox is so common that it is a lot like going to the dentist. You go every few months to have your teeth professionally cleaned and then you're done. But in other parts of the world, like the Philippines, people are still wary over including Botox in their anti-aging regimen. And these are usually people who have never had the procedure done before. So in today's video, I want to address all major questions about Botox and our clinical experience with doing Botox. Uh, and hopefully at the end of the video, you can decide for yourself if the benefits will outweigh the possible dangers. Now, right off the bat, I want to answer two of the most frequently asked questions about Botox. And number one is, is it safe? Okay. so. In all our years of doing Botox, uh, complications are very, very few and far between. As a matter of fact, I myself have been doing Botox for close to eight or nine years now on myself, and I have never once had any complication. And the second, the most frequently asked question is, will it make my face look unnatural? Will it give me a frozen look? Because that's what they see on the internet. And I'm going to answer that question. Again, I have been doing Botox for close to eight or nine years now. And if I hadn't told you that I am on Botox, you probably will not have guessed. I can still move my face any way I want. Uh, the only advantage is after eight or nine years of doing Botox, I remain relatively wrinkle free at 50 years young. Now, in today's video, not only will I be answering the most frequently asked questions about Botox, but I'm also going to be showing you the procedure I had done just a couple of days ago. That's right, I had Botox done about two days ago and this is why my face is still uh, a bit red from the anesthesia and the injection points. And I'm going to be showing the procedure just so you know uh, how we perform it or how one of our doctors performed it at Lumiere. Before we get into that, I want to tell you why I believe it's a good idea to include Botox in your anti-aging program. If you are really serious about slowing down or reversing extrinsic or external signs of aging, then I seriously believe that you should consider Botox. Why? Number one, it is an excellent preventive measure. Now. There are basically two types of wrinkles. One is the dynamic wrinkles or the wrinkles that you get when you animate or move your face. When you make certain expressions like smile, raise your eyebrows, those are called dynamic wrinkles. I'm going to go up close and show you so you can see the dynamic wrinkling. Now, the second type of wrinkle is called a static wrinkle. When wrinkles, when dynamic wrinkles set, and they form and they won't go away even if the face is at rest, then you have static wrinkles. And when you get static wrinkles, unfortunately, and it's too late for Botox. Botox is very good at reversing or minimizing animation lines or uh, dynamic wrinkles. But once they set, again, once they become static wrinkles, then Botox is no longer an option for you. Why does this happen? You can think of skin as being a lot like paper. If I keep folding the paper on a certain place, then a crease will form where I keep on folding the paper. So as we go about our daily lives, we're always animating, we're always moving our faces with micro gestures. Over time, when we uh, become older and collagen degrades, these dynamic wrinkles will slowly settle into a more permanent type of wrinkle called the static wrinkle. The less you move the face, the less animation lines there are as you get older, the longer it will take for static wrinkles to form. And this is really the number one benefit of starting Botox early. How early? Some people do it as young as 25. It really depends on your skin type and ethnicity, but I myself around mid-30s, I would already encourage people to start doing Botox, right? The second reason is because Botox is the fastest way to minimize and even eliminate wrinkles. If you already have them, if you already, 
if the animation lines are already beginning to show, then there are several options that you have. There are lasers and mechanical treatments, and there is Botox. Botox is by far the fastest way because the way it works is that it paralyzes certain facial muscles, and so these muscles cannot contract. And if the muscles cannot contract, the wrinkles cannot form. Lasers do reverse uh, skin wrinkling by building the collagen underneath the skin. But this usually takes time, a few weeks to a few months. But Botox is instant. In about two or three days, you're already going to see uh, the results. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be showing you the results on my procedure after 21 days. Now, the third reason is it's an excellent way to get a mini lift. If you have an event or uh, an important function, if the doctor knows what he or she is doing, then injecting in the right places will relax certain muscles and actually pull the skin up. So it's an excellent adjunctive treatment to uh, any lifting procedure. Okay, so now that I've answered those basic concerns, I wanna show you how our doctor uh, does Botox on me. Uh, I'm gonna show you my procedure right now. And after that, I'm going to be moving on to the question and answer portion where I can hopefully answer all your questions about Botox. Here you go. Because we blink around 20,000 times a day, and because the skin around our eyes is around 40% thinner than the rest of our face, crow's feet, or wrinkling around the eyes, is one of the most common signs of aging. Here, our doctor is injecting a few units of Botox around each eye to minimize the appearance of fine lines. You can see in the close-up shots how carefully our doctor measures each injection point. This is very, very crucial because over-injecting in this area can actually cause drooping in the eye. The next area to be treated is the glabella, or more commonly known as the frown lines. These are the number 11 lines in between your eyebrows. When these deepen over time, it can give you the appearance of a permanent scowl. So catching and treating this early is crucial. Deep lines in the glabella are notoriously hard to erase. So we always recommend to clients to have them treated as soon as they begin to notice them. Next, we move on to the forehead lines. This is where most of the units of Botox will be injected, and it's very crucial that your doctor knows what he or she is doing. Because of the position of the elevator and the depressor muscles, which move your eyebrows up and down, overcorrecting in these areas can result to either raised eyebrows, known as spocking, or drooping of the eyebrows, known as hooding. Here, our doctor is using a combination of intramuscular and subcutaneous injection techniques to maximize Botox diffusion. Lastly, we move on to the area under the eyes. The skin here is very thin and very sensitive, and make sure your doctor is very, very experienced before he or she attempts to inject you in this area. All right, now that you've seen how it's done, let's move on to the question and answer portion. Uh, the first question is, how does Botox work? So uh, Botox works by blocking the signal from the nerve to the muscle. There is a neurotransmitter called acetylcholine, which uh, the brain uses to tell the muscles to move. And what Botox does is it blocks the release of acetylcholine so that when the brain sends a signal for the muscles to move, the muscle can't move, and so the wrinkle cannot form. Um, second question, how long does the procedure take? This depends. How much uh, Botox we need to use and uh, the surface area that we need to treat. Now, for somebody who just wants to treat the crow's feet, you could be in and out in five minutes. Uh, but for somebody who needs to do the whole face, including the forehead, the, the glabella, uh, and so forth, the procedure can take anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes. And this is not including anesthesia. 
So uh, that brings us to the third question, uh, will we need anesthesia? The treatment itself, uh, Botox itself in particular, is not really painful. There's no burning sensation with the medicine, but uh, some people uh, don't like uh, the sensation of the needle going in and out of the skin. And if we need to treat multiple areas, I would recommend that uh, the client ask for uh, a numbing cream at the very least so that uh, the whole procedure will become as comfortable as possible. With the right amount of anesthesia, you're not even going to feel anything, right? Uh, as a matter of fact, that's why my face is still a bit red because I myself used anesthesia and I left it on a bit too long, but I just wanted to be safe. So, uh, question number four. Which areas are usually treated? Now, uh, the FDA approval for Botox is uh, to treat uh, the glabella or the number 11 in between your eyebrows. Uh, it is used to treat uh, forehead wrinkles, right, and crow's feet. Uh, so those are what uh, the FDA has approved uh, Botox for. And that's usually about 70-80% of all uh, uh, Botox patients who come to us need uh, this area to be treated. But there are some off-label uses for Botox that uh, I can touch on just so you will have an idea but I will uh, deal with in later videos. Number one is it can be used to treat hyperhidrosis or excessive sweating in the palms and the feet. Uh, another uh, use for Botox is you can actually use it to treat uh, wrinkling on the neck, right? It's an off-label indication because it's not FDA approved, but uh, it can help with uh, aging signs on the neck. Another off-label indication for Botox is for facial contouring. You can actually inject uh, Botox in the muscles of the masseter and what that will do is it will cause the muscles here to atrophy and it will give you a slimmer shape. It's not for everybody, you have to be a suitable candidate and we're going to touch on that on succeeding videos. So those are some of the most uh, common uses of Botox. There are a lot more but I'm going to go into those on separate videos. For now we're going to be focusing on uh, wrinkles. Okay. Uh, how soon before I see the results? I think I touched on this earlier in the introduction, but usually you'll begin to see the results after three or four days. And the results are going to be at their maximum. The, the results are going to be at their most final at around 10 to 14 days. So the next question is, how long does Botox last? That usually depends on your metabolism, your age, and how often you've had it done. The more frequently you have Botox, there are some trains of thought that suggest that if you have it done frequently, you train your muscles to relax, so you're going to need it less and less. Typically, uh, the safe answer would be anywhere from four to six months. So uh, if you don't do anything special, if you are the average person, then Botox should last you anywhere between four to six months. It's important to note here that as the wrinkles become less severe, then you're going to need to do the treatment less and less often. I think that's one of the reasons why I do it very, very seldomly now. Uh, number one is because I have been able to incorporate a lot of lifestyle choices that have slowed down the rate at which I age. And number two is because I've been doing this for so long, uh, the wrinkles actually did not really get a chance to form. Heavy wrinkles did not really get a chance to form, so I don't really need to do it as often. I do it about once, twice a year at most. Okay, so the next question is, what are the most common uh, side effects of Botox? What are the most common complications? Okay, so the most common complication by far is usually grouping of the eyebrows or raising of the eyebrows, right? Um, and this usually can happen when, especially for first timers, uh, we don't really know how the medicine will react. Uh, Botox reacts differently to different people. So even if you give a standard uniform dose, it can have a different effect on some people. And um, uh, another reason for, usually this happens to first timers is because they do not, uh, they fail to follow proper instructions. We usually tell them not to rub their faces because it can cause the Botox to migrate. 
and we also instruct our patients not to lie down uh, four hours in the four hour period after treatment. Again, because if you lay down on one side of your face, then there's a chance for the Botox to migrate, right? So, but as long as you follow these procedures, these complications are very, very rare. Another possible complication is some people do experience mild headaches. Uh, personally, yes, I have heard of this once or twice, but they're very, very uncommon, and they usually go away after 24 to 48 hours. So those are about the only major complications other than the bruising, right? Uh, some people do get bruising. That's normal with any uh, injection procedure, right? So again, it usually goes away after three to four days, even if you, in the, in the event that you do get it. Okay, so who should not do Botox, right? So that's another frequently asked question. Uh, am I a good candidate? Uh, let me start by saying if you are pregnant, you are breastfeeding, uh, it's best to avoid Botox again because it's systemic, right? So those are... Uh, the, the two major ones, uh, another contraindication is if you have neurological disorders, right? Facial paralysis and stuff like that. But again, those are very, very rare. Okay. Another frequently asked question is if I discontinue or if I stop doing Botox, will my wrinkles become worse? No. Uh, the worst that can happen is they will go back to the way it looked before. Uh, in some cases, if you're lucky, even if you decide to discontinue, the Botox does become lighter, especially if you uh, do this procedure when you are younger. So uh, those are the most frequently asked questions about Botox. If you have any more questions that I have not been able to answer, uh, please do uh, leave your questions on the comment boxes below, or you can message us on Facebook or Instagram. I'm going to be giving you the links later. Uh, in the meantime, I want to give you some uh, tips, all right? These are some uh, tips that I've outlined uh, that you should keep in mind before you even consider Botox, right? And uh, the number one tip that I can give you is watch your lifestyle. Why do I say this? I have been talking about the 360 anti-aging program in which we try to slow down the rate at which we age. When you slow down the rate at which you age, you're going to be delaying the need for Botox. And even if, because everybody will eventually wrinkle, even when the time comes that you need uh, Botox, you're not going to be needing as much uh, Botox as somebody who has uh, lived a poor lifestyle. Somebody who smokes, for instance, will wrinkle earlier. So if you don't smoke, you don't drink, uh, you delay the onset of wrinkling and by the time you need it, you're going to need less than a person who actually smokes and drinks. So uh, another thing to consider uh, before you do Botox is to first consider or to consider along with Botox lasers and other mechanical or energy devices. Why? Because uh, these two systems are actually mechanistically different. Whereas uh, Botox works by paralyzing certain muscles, lasers and other energy devices work by stimulating collagen production. These are two very different things. Again, if you haven't seen my video on collagen, uh, I'm going to be sending a link on the description box below so you can check it out. Basically, I want you to think of collagen as a lot like um, bubble wrap, right? When you're young, your collagen is round, soft, and full of air, the, the bubble wrap that you have under your skin, so that anything that sits on top of the bubble wrap, i.e. your skin, is tight, right? But as you age, your collagen begins to degrade. It's like letting air out of the bubble wrap. And when that happens, then uh, the wrinkling begins to form. When the, when the collagen separates, uh, it's in the, usually in the thinnest areas of the, the skin, like the forehead, uh, the, the crow's feet and the area under the eye, those are the areas that wrinkle first, right? Because the skin is thin. And what lasers and other mechanical devices do is they build up the collagen again or they, they put the air back into the collagen. So it stretches the skin. So they are mechanistically different. One builds collagen, the other one 
paralyzes uh, the facial muscles. If you do both of them together, you are going to get excellent, excellent results. And not only that, you're going to need less and less Botox, right? So uh, the third thing to consider is uh, the body's immune system, right? So the body's immune system is capable of developing antibodies to uh, Botox. So uh, while I did mention earlier that the more often you do Botox, the less you're going to need it because you train the muscles to um, relax. Uh, the flip side is, if you do Botox too often, then you can develop an immunity to its effect. So one way to, um, to get around this, uh, auto, this, this, the, this immune response is by asking for different brands of Botox every time you have the procedure done. So it could be Neuronox, it could be um, Dysport the next, it could be Botox the next. So it's really up to you. You should consult your doctor, all right? So uh, the last thing I want you to consider before getting a Botox treatment is that the Botox is not an iron. Again, if the wrinkles are already static, right? If they are there, even if you're not moving your face, then it's uh, a bit too late for Botox and you should consider uh, other adjunctive treatments. So I hope uh, the takeaway that you get from this video is start early. It is not dangerous. It's actually very, very safe. It's not painful and it's not that expensive. It's a very good investment if you want to delay the signs of aging because a wrinkle-free face can make you look as much as 10 years younger than you actually are. There you have it. Everything you need to know about Botox. I hope this video has been very, very helpful. If you haven't already, please do subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the notification bell so that you're going to be the first to know every time I have a new video out on anti-aging. You can also reach us on our website, www.lumierskinandspa.com and you can visit our social media pages to find out more about our 360 anti-aging program. That's Lumiere Skin and Spa on Facebook and Instagram. Until next time, this has been Mike Chan. To your looks and good health.